Hey, Storytime grown-ups, How are you today? If you haven't done one of these um, before, this is a Storytime extension video. Um, I will take just a few minutes to give you some ideas of things that you can do that are related to our Storytime theme for this week. My name is Miss Lisa and I get to do the Storytimes at Worthington Park Library. And just a quick background is that I um, was a preschool teacher and my degree is in early childhood ed and I have had four kids of my own. So a lot of these ideas I, I try and test on my littlest one that's still doing preschool at home. So if you are doing preschool at home as well this year, hopefully this gives you some fun ideas to do. All right, our theme this week was pond. And I know that I have to start by explaining what a pond is usually in story time um, and at home with my kids when I do this theme. So you might wanna go ahead and start with a pond is a small lake, small body of water. Um, it usually has quite a few different animals in it. Um, this week, we usually work with things related to frogs and ducks and turtles, but we also include maybe otters or beavers or, um, you know, some of the snakes you might find around a pond. So, and geese, you could include geese. I personally don't like geese, so I don't really use them very much. <laughs> But you can, um, you can include animals that maybe you notice if you go explore a pond. So that is my first idea, is to try to find a park with a pond near you. Um, and when you go explore, see if you can find a map of the park and have your child help you try to navigate the map, which is such a great skill to start relating that spatial reasoning of map reading to navigating. Um, so see if they can help you figure out where the pond is. Make sure you take some binoculars if you have them, or you can make paper towel roll binoculars by stapling two paper towel roll, or toilet paper roll binoculars by stapling two toilet paper roll insides together. Or one of my kids likes to just do this. So you could do that too. That completely works. It's still narrowing their field of vision um, and helping them to focus on what they're looking for. Now, if you find a pond that you can go just sit and observe for a while at a park, I would also recommend taking along a clipboard, if you have one, with a piece of paper and a marker or a pen or a pencil, um, and let your child document what they see. So when we are working on our science skills, uh, we work on documentation because that's just writing stuff down. So it expands what we're doing into our building our writing skills, um, working on our sounding out. You can also just let your child draw anything important that they see. That's still building their writing skills. Anytime that we are drawing, coloring, working with the, that pincer grip, we are working on our writing skills and we're building those muscles that we need for the future. So go explore a pond, tell your kid they're gonna be a pond scientist, Take the equipment if you have it. Go anyway if you don't. Um, if you have a phone that has a camera on it, you can let your child take pictures of some of the things they see or they can ask you to take pictures, um, which is another fun way to document. And then they can write about it when they get home if that's easier too. I think the biggest trick with exploring anything as a scientist is working on just sitting and watching it for a little bit. That is a hard skill for littler ones. Um, but I know that when mine have clipboards, they will sit and write for a lot longer than they would have otherwise. So hopefully the Explore Pond goes well for you, especially if we continue to have such lovely weather here and there. It might be really nice to get to do. Um, the next idea I had is a lily pad hop. I was trying to read it backwards. It wasn't going very well for me. A lily pad hop. So you could go out and draw with sidewalk chalk some lily pads. Lily pads are just a circle with a little notch in it. So you could draw some lily pads. If you want, you can write numbers on them if your child is working on going in numerical order. Um, or you can do it where when they get to the number, they have to hop that many times in place or hop like a frog that many times. Um, you can also write letters on them and your child can work on trying to identify the letters in their name or things that start with that letter sound if they're a little bit older. 
So the lily pad hop has a lot of extension activities that you can do. Um, the longest part of it's probably going to be drawing the lily pads. And if your little one wants to work on their circles, they could help you draw the lily pads too. All right. So that is the next idea. I was also thinking that you could play sink or float. I don't know if you ever do this as a science experiment at your house. It's my favorite lazy science experiment because all you need is a clear bowl of water is best or a clear like extra container that you might have. Um, just fill it up with some water and then put in different things that you have just sitting around your house and see if they sink or if they float. Now your little scientist is going to need to make a guess or a hypothesis if they think it's going to sink or float. And then if you have an older one and you can ask them why they're thinking that, it's a great time to talk about like weight, viscosity. You can get into some big role concepts there. All right, so sink or float is one of my favorite things to do. Unfortunately, sometimes I will find my kids doing this experiment all on their own by filling up the sink and tossing things in. So you do wanna make sure that it is with your permission. Sink or float is also a lovely way to extend some outside time if you have a bin of water that you can just put outside. All right, plus then you don't have to clean it all up inside. Our next idea is to do a water lily science experiment that I found and I haven't tried it, so we'll see how it goes. But basically you just make a little flower, have your little one cut it out, and then you fold down all the petals. So it's real nice and tight. And then, in theory, if we put it in water, I'm gonna put this down and we'll see what happens. If we put it in water, very lightly at the top, it blossoms. I was not sure that would work and that's very exciting. So you can do that um, with your little one. Ooh, let's see if I can make this not nauseating. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so you could do that with your little one. I would have them cut out the flower petals if they are working on their cutting skills. I would definitely have them color it in um, so they can draw a flower, color it in, and you can cut it out if that's better for you. And then just fold the petals over the middle and put it in some water and see what happens. I also thought it'd be fun if you wanted to make a lily pad to go with it because lily pads are a big thing in ponds. Um, normally in story time, we talk about the importance of lily pads and ponds and all of the many ways that they help the pond ecosystem. Um, so it might be worth researching really quickly if you have a child that's into this concept. All right. The next idea is, oh dear. Oh, sing a song. <laughs> I'm having the hardest time reading that backwards today. All right. So I was thinking if you know the song Five Green and Speckled Frogs, you could make some puppets to go along with it. Or there's, um, there are lots of activities you can find to go along with this. If you don't know the song, let me do it for you real fast, right? Five green and speckled frogs sitting on a speckled log eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there are four green speckled frogs, and then you just keep counting down. It's fantastic for um, working on those math skills. And I like to stop every now and then and say, how frogs are, how many frogs are there, including the ones in the water? Because those frogs don't stop being frogs when they go in the water. And then we're starting to work on all of our math facts to five. So we know we have four on the log and one in the water. We still have five fingers, don't we? Yep. And then when we have three in the water and two on top, we still have five. Um, so working on all of those math facts to five are gonna help them be so much faster when they do their math facts to 10. Um, another idea I had along with this is that in, you could do five green and speckled frogs and you can introduce your child to the concept of duck, duck, goose, which are also animals that would live around a pond. Um, especially if you have older sibs that can play duck to goose along with them, that'll work a little bit better. If it's just the two of you, it may not work super well. 
Um, I have also had just a delightful time trying to teach little ones to play Duck Duck Goose. It is always worth the effort. Um, and even if they don't get it, it's still a pretty good laugh. So the last idea I had is that you can make a little artistic turtle. And I know I go a little, a little happy with the mosaic things on, um, on plates. So we have, we made this very fancy turtle. All you would need to do is rip up pieces or cut up pieces. Either way, we're working on those writing and fine motor skills. Um, rip up pieces, cut up pieces to turn into your turtle shell. Um, I just cut a piece of paper plate in half. And then we added our little tail and our, our feet and a head. My daughter cut those out and did a really good job with those. Um, she wanted her turtle to look surprised, so I'm not really sure what happened there. I don't know. Surprise turtle. Ah. All right. So that is a pretty quick activity that you could definitely spread out over a couple days if you had them, you know, draw the legs and the head and the tail on one day and cut them out and then had them mosaic the next day and then glue it all together. You could also turn it into a duck if you put a head right up here and did all yellow pieces. Um, so you could definitely make yourself a couple of different pond animals. You can use the other part of the same plate to make the duck and that way you're not wasting anything. All right. I hope that that gave you some fun, easy ideas with things that you already have around your house. That is one of my big things that I'm trying to do is make sure that it is low prep and stuff you already have at your house. And then also that maybe it buys you a little bit of time while they're actively doing something to, you know, sit for a second. So, all right. Best of luck, grown-ups. I hope that preschool at home is going really well, and I hope these videos are at least a tiny bit helpful in that journey. And I miss you and hope to see you someday back at story time. Take care of each other.